Hey everyone, this is Pete, and I've been away from YouTube for a few weeks uh, for various reasons, so I just wanted to have a little chat with you all and a bit of a catch up and um, talk about where I'm going to go from here and just to make life a little more interesting for those of you watching, uh, I'm going to play some Anarchy on uh, Evercade while we do this. Uh, this is the C64 version of Anarchy, uh, nothing to do with the ST version I've previously covered on this channel. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, right, where are we, uh, medium intermediate, one player, all right, I, I'm not going to be talking about the game much, um, because I just want to talk about other stuff today, basically, um, we'll, we'll look in more detail at this another time, but yeah, so, so where have I been, um, just, just not here, basically, um, because, to be honest, I just haven't, haven't really felt like doing youtube recently uh for various reasons um and i wanted to talk a little bit about that today because I, I i think it's it's something worth talking about oops a little while back um i published a couple of videos that did very well um extraordinarily well for this channel as it happens uh, one of them was on the indie racing game super woden gp2 uh, which is a very good game, uh, so I encourage you to go and watch that video to see why it's a good game. Um, and the other one, which uh, didn't do quite as crazy numbers, but was still very good by channel standards, was one on the announcement of the Atari 400 Mini. Um, like I say, both of those did amazingly well by my standards. I normally get like maybe a couple of hundred views at best on my videos. So that's gradually been creeping up as, as the years have gone by. I used to get sort of consistently double figures. And now I fairly consistently get triple figures, which is nice. Um, but the Super Widen GP video did 83,000 videos, uh, videos, views at the time of recording. Um, and the Atari 400 mini video did, um, I think it was 12 or 13,000 or so on, which is obviously way beyond what I normally do. Uh, figures wise um, and I have mixed feelings about both of those which you, you might think is a little bit strange because surely everyone who's on YouTube wants to be a big success and wants to make money from doing what they love and that sort of thing but those videos blowing up put a lot of things into perspective for me uh, and made me Maybe sort of confirm something to myself that I, I already knew, but I sort of feel, I feel like these proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt, and that is that I'm really not in this for success. I'm really not in this to get a huge audience or to be famous or anything like that. Um, because frankly, I didn't really enjoy the experience of those videos doing well. It was. Um, the Super Wade, excuse me, the Super Wade and GP one in particular made me feel quite uncomfortable at times because when a video does that well, it prompts a lot of people to sort of come to your channel for the first time. They don't know you, they don't know your style of presentation, they don't know what you normally do. Um, but with the way people interact with one another on the internet these days, uh, people sometimes act in a way that I wouldn't necessarily call appropriate towards a stranger. Um, they'll sort of say things to you and they'll sort of say that, oh, you're wrong. They'll, they'll... I don't think anyone actually insulted me on the Super Waden GP2 video, but the, just the, the way a lot of people talk to me on it made me feel a bit uncomfortable. To such a degree that I ended up pausing the comments on it so that uh, no new comments could be posted. And it was it was still getting views after I did that. So it obviously didn't piss people off to such a degree that they didn't want to watch the video anymore. But um, I found the fact that I, I felt like I had to do that was quite interesting. Because it just highlighted to me that I'm, I'm really not in this for the views. I'm really not in this to sort of build up a huge following or anything like that. 
I just make videos on YouTube because I enjoy making them. I enjoy talking about the things that are important to me. Um, and I like sharing them with people who sort of share an interest in that sort of thing. I like to think that my videos are informative and interesting and maybe entertaining even. But like I say, my, my, my primary reason for doing this is, is not fame and relative fortune. I mean, yes, it, it was nice to have one video do more revenue than I've had in, like, the last couple of years. And that was a nice bit of pocket money to spend on some, some nice things for myself. But I'm not sure it was worth it. I'm not sure it was it was worth the the stress it caused me and the the discomfort I felt from suddenly having to deal with this overwhelming number of new people coming in talking to me in a way that I wasn't entirely comfortable with and um yeah all all the related th issues that come up with that And so that prompted me to to take a break for a bit and just have a think about what I'm doing. Um, those of you who've been following me for a while will know that... How the hell do you get these? <laughs> those of you who've been following me for a while will know that I, I've sort of experimented quite a bit with different formats for my videos over the years. I've done um, kind of Let's Plays, which I call Exploring Together on this channel uh, where I sit down and play something and comment on it in real time as it were. And I enjoy doing that because I think that's that's a good way of showing off particularly retro games that can sometimes be a little bit obtuse and explaining how to play them, uh, what's interesting about them and demonstrating my reactions to them for, for the first time as well because in a lot of cases I haven't played these games before. So I'm um, encountering them for the first time and learning about them. And so I think that format is quite a good one. But it's also hard to deny that when I've done pre-scripted stuff, like the Super Woden GP2 video and the Atari 400 Mini video, um, that they tend to do a little bit better because I think... I think they demand less in the way of prior familiarity with my channel and with me. And they stand more by themselves as sort of almost like quasi-documentaries. I mean, that's that's a, a pretentious way to describe what I do, but that's the sort of thing. The It's the difference between um, virtually sitting down with a virtual friend and playing a game with them, which is what a Let's Play is, basically, um, and having someone who is a quote-unquote expert on the subject tell you things about it, which is where the, the pre-scripted stuff uh, stands. And I like doing both, and I'm proud of what I've created in both um, genres, if you like. Uh, but I, I've I've constantly found myself umming and ahhing over what is quote unquote best for the channel, whether I should keep doing this pre-scripted stuff with with higher production values, or if I should do what I started this channel with and what I enjoyed doing on this channel for a very long time, which is to just sit down, play a game, talk about it, as if I'm sitting with a friend talking about it. And I think, honestly, the, the optimal answer is probably a bit of both. But the way my brain works, um, I have Asperger's, if anyone wasn't familiar. The way my brain works, it, it, it tends to want to do, like, all or nothing, one or the other. And so it's quite hard to sort of get into the mindset of, of thinking, well, maybe doing a bit of both is fine. And I've been trying to sort of get that in my mind while considering what I want to do with the channel in such a way that I can keep doing what I enjoy but without overwhelming myself with 
uh, people coming in. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm extremely grateful for the number of people who did show up and um, watch the Super Wyden GP2 video and the 400 mini video. Um, and I'm glad that what I had to say was worthwhile for a bunch of people. But like I say, for every for every person who was pleasant, there was someone who was perhaps a little bit less pleasant. And you won't necessarily see those in, in the comment section if you go and be nosy and have a look now. Um, because when I get a nasty comment, I tend to just delete it and hide the user from the channel so they don't bother me again. Which is exactly why that feature's there. But just sort of thinking about all this, it, it, I, I feel almost a sense of guilt saying all this because I feel like there's a way that I feel almost like that that, that I, I I should be approaching YouTube in a certain way and I should be doing this and I should be doing that and really there is there is no should because this is this is a creative medium. Yes, there are things you can do that will bait the algorithm and make your video more likely to get seen, but honestly, I don't really care all that much. Oops. Honestly, I don't really care all that much. Because, as I say, the primary reason that I'm here is just to share my love for the gaming hobby with people who feel the same way. I'm not here to start arguments. I'm not here to sort of rant about things. I'm not here to declare anything the worst thing ever. I like games. I like lots of games. I like lots of games that some, pe some people or the general public don't like. And I enjoy being enthusiastic about them because there are a lot of things in today's life that are miserable. The whole world has had a rough few years with things like COVID-19 and all manner of other stuff happening. And so I use my hobbies as an escape from that, as a means of switching off from the world and just being able to immerse myself in something that I enjoy. And I find it valuable to talk about it, to explain why I enjoy the things I enjoy, why they are important to me, oops, all that sort of thing. Um, the other reason that I've been absent for a bit and, and why I wanted to sort of take a, a step back from doing too much is um, my wife Andy and I have had uh, a bit of a, a rough time in our personal lives recently. Um, which is to do with one of our pets. Um, I've talked about our, our, our cats a few times on this channel, um, and they've even put in an appearance a few times. Um, but a little while back, um, one of our one of our cats, Meg, was obviously not very well. She lost a lot of weight very quickly, and we were concerned about her. So we took her to the vet and got some got a tested for a few things and they didn't seem to really know what was going on um and they said just just sort of see if she loses any more weight and and bring her back if she does and, and she did so we we took her back and gave her some very expensive tests and so on and um sadly it transpired that she she had what looked like liver cancer and after those tests she declined very very quickly i think I think the experience of, of, of having those tests have been put under general anaesthetic and, and subjected to to things like x-rays and whatever else they did was was just traumatic for her and it was obvious that her body was giving up on her and she was only 12 years old which is no age for a cat to no age for a cat to depart and obviously, as you might expect, uh, me and Andy were very upset about it. Not not just when she when she when she finally passed, uh, which was which was on Monday this week, but during her whole decline, because it was very sad to see 
this beloved pet who we had spent such wonderful times with um, slipping away from us. And while that was happening, frankly, I just wasn't in the mood to to do anything that involved appearing on camera or anything like that. I don't want to say I wasn't in the mood to do anything creative because I've often found in the past that being creative is a great outlet for negative emotions. Some of my best creative work that I've made over the years has been when I've been at my lowest points. Now this isn't saying that you should deliberately go out and seek negative experiences so that you, you have a a flash of creativity or anything like that but um yeah the fact is that i've always found creative pursuits um to be a good means of dealing with things <coughs> excuse me yeah I, i've always found creative pursuits to be a good way of dealing with negative emotions and, and bad things that are happening in your life at the time um, I just didn't want to appear on camera or talk out loud or anything like that. And hopefully you hopefully you understand that. Um, and everything is still a bit still a bit raw at the minute. It's it's all still happened a bit recently to to completely process what what happened. But I want to try and move forward. I want to try and move forward and not not get too hung up on the past and not dwell on sad things too much because it's important to mourn and grieve when you lose a loved one but it's also important to be able to move forward and because your life goes on just because one life has regrettably ended it doesn't mean that yours does as well And so I've I've shed plenty of tears for Meg, don't you worry. And uh, I continue to do so. But I also sort of want to get back to the basics of things that I enjoy, basically. That's too many basicallys, I know, but whatever. I'm speaking off the cuff here. And so I've been thinking about what I want to do with YouTube from here. And there are a few things that I, I would like to do in the coming weeks and months. One is to do some more stuff with the 400 Mini. I know I've said that sort of the, the success of that video made me a little bit uncomfortable, but I do... I am happy to see people giving the Atari 8-bit some more attention and love because of the 400 mini and so i want to share my love of the atari 8-bit and its games uh, so i'm probably going to do some sort of video series involving the 400 mini um in all likelihood it <coughs> excuse me in all likelihood it will be something like the 400 mini a to z where i go through all the 25 games on there and then maybe perhaps suggest some additional games that people might want to load on to the system if they choose to get one as well. And even if you don't pick up a 400 Mini specifically, that series will hopefully be helpful to people who are still interested in exploring the Atari 8-bit line of computers and the games and software that are available for them. So I think that's a good nice structured idea for a series that I'd like to do and I will probably do those those videos as in the in the kind of let's play style I might give them a little bit more structure um, in that I might sort of include a particular section on how to play the game or things that are worth noting about the game for newcomers and that kind of thing but I think the the sort of you're sitting down with a friend and playing this game with them approach is the right approach to take with that one. 
Equally, I also want to continue with the Atari A to Z anthology series that I started, which was going through all the games by Activision and in Magic. Uh, because I, I was enjoying that, but that series sort of stalled because I was I was getting involved with doing various other things, um, and so that series just just kind of stalled a bit. But I would like to get back to that because that was that was a lot of fun. And just some other bits and pieces as well, some general bits and pieces like I've like I've been doing. I think one thing that I've done in the past is is get a little bit too hung up on series and feel like that I'm not able to cover certain things because I have my series to think about. Um, but I think in this instance, at the same time, I think also some of my best work has been done when I have had a structured series rather than just covering stuff for the sake of it. So, for example, I think one of my one of my proudest accomplishments on this YouTube channel is making it all the way through Atari A to Z Flashback, all 150 games of that collection, one video per game. The oh, sun's coming out, um, and making a complete series of that. And so, I think doing something like that for the 400 mini will be fun. I think continuing to do it for the Activision and the Magic Atari 2600 games will be fun. And I think that's probably fine to focus on for now. Because the temptation is... When you have a YouTube channel, the temptation is to make everything you do into content. And I've spoken before about how much I hate the term content and what it does to the way people think about creative work. And so I want to try and get myself out of that mindset, that, that mindset of everything has to be content, by reserving some stuff to be just for me. Now, at the same time, I have also resurrected my website, MarioGamer.net, which had kind of lain dormant for a little while while I was working on Rice Digital. Um, I haven't been working on Rice Digital for a while because I moved full-time over to the Evercade team um, to work on digital content and the manuals for them. But I love writing. Writing is probably my main love, as a lot of you know. And so I've been doing a lot more on Moe Gamer recently. And I've been rediscovering a passion for writing about games. And so a lot of my more in-depth thoughts about particularly current and recent stuff is going to be on Moe Gamer rather than on YouTube. Now, in some cases, I may think, oh, well, this article might make a good video. So that may happen when I can be bothered to do so. But I think for the most part, the two things will be kept fairly separate from one another. Moe Gamer includes some retro stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, quite a lot of retro stuff, in fact. Um, but its main focus is on current stuff. It's not exclusively on Japanese stuff like it used to be. Or Japanese-inspired stuff like it used to be. It's just my gaming website. It's my site where I write about games. It's my site where if I've got something to say about a game or I want to share my impressions of it, that's where I do it. And like I say, I, c I could do that on... Uh oh And like I say, I, c I could do that on YouTube. But I, I enjoy writing. As well as talking, as it were. <laughs> nope. Oh, God. And so that's basically the, the, the plan for now. That's where I've been. That's why I've sort of been hesitant to come back and just suddenly start doing things on here again. I, I wanted to give you all an explanation because I'm sure some of you have been, have been wondering where I've been and um, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to apologize for taking some time away because I think it's important to be able to step back when you need to and not feel obligated to 
particularly when you're not a professional, it's important to not feel obligated to an audience because it's supposed to be a hobby. It's not your job. So if you need to take time for yourself, you should be able to take time for yourself. So that's that's exactly what I've done. And as I say, the temptation can often be to think, oh, well, my views will go down, my subs will go down. And if you care about that sort of thing, fine. I, I've been coming to the conclusion, though, that I, I sort of don't. <laughs> Well, no, it's it's not that I don't care because it has been nice to see the new subscribers and it, and it was nice to see those two videos do well. But it's not something I specific. It's not something I specifically want to aim for. It's not something I. It's not my priority. Is probably the best way to put it. And so, starting soon. I don't know if that means this weekend or something else. Starting at some point soon, um, I'm going to kick off those new series, or continue in the case of Atari A to Zen Anthology. At the time of recording, the, the 400 Mini is not available until the end of the month, so I'm probably going to wait until that arrives to start doing that series. I mean, I could start the series now and just use... Uh, emulation on PC to do it but I think I think I'll wait until I think I'll wait until it's it's current as, as it were because then some people might find it helpful Come on, five seconds. Oh, clutch win. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, this has been a long and fairly aimless ramble, for which I make no apologies, because that's, that's just what I do. But hopefully that's given you a better idea of where I've been, what's been going through in my mind, and why I've been kind of hesitant to, to do some new stuff. But yeah, I think I think the conclusion I've come to is that I don't want to quit. I don't want to stop because I enjoy I enjoy this. It's become an important part of my gaming hobby in general, not just not just YouTube YouTubing as a hobby and and gaming as a hobby as two separate things. Being able to make videos about stuff and write about stuff has become an important part of how I appreciate games and how I it's been a prompt to learn more about things like game design and the history of gaming technology and all that sort of thing. And so, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm not quitting, but I might make a few changes to how I do things and just sort of focus specifically on what I want to do rather than what I think YouTube says that I should do if you like. And so I, I'd like to reiterate that I don't feel in any way ungrateful. F I don't feel in any way ungrateful for the surprising amount of success that those two videos I mentioned have had. And I don't regret making them or anything like that. But they did sort of put a few things into perspective and make me think, well, okay, am I sure about this? Am I absolutely sure about this? And the answer was, no, I'm not. <laughs> and so when you're not sure about something, the important thing to do is have a good think about it. So I did. And these are the conclusions that I came to. So, 
So to summarize, what you can expect from me in the very near future is a continuation of Atari A to Z Anthology, which will likely continue taking the Let's Play format. Um, when the 400 Mini releases, there will be a series of videos on the games in that. And there may be some one-off videos. I, I think what I will what I will probably do is I will I will reserve the pre-scripted videos as one-off videos for something that I just they just left an impact on me and made me want to made me want to create a video about it. Things like my Star Trek Resurgence video is a good example. I enjoyed that game so much that I wanted to talk about it, and I thought it was. I thought showing it off in a video was an effective means of talking about that. So that's what I did in that case. So that's the plan. Like I say, I don't know if I'm going to kick that off this week or if I'm just going to leave this week as, as just this video. I'll see how I feel after I finish recording here. But that's the plan, certainly. Get out of here. Anyway, yes, hopefully you've enjoyed my gradual improvement at Anarchy as uh, as we've been talking. Oh, that's one other thing I do want to do. It occurs to me. Um, is do some more Evercade stuff. Um, I actually specifically checked with my manager at Evercade whether it would be okay to do that sort of thing. And it, it, it's fine. It's fine. So probably what I will do is just for the sake of anyone who gets a bit funny about such things, I will just have a brief disclosure on each video that I work for Blaze and that it doesn't represent the views of Blaze or anything like that. It's my own personal viewpoint and blah, 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 that sort of thing. But yeah, I will probably um, start doing some Evercade videos again as well. And again, those will likely take the Let's Play format so I can talk about the game as I play it, explain how to play it, how to get the best out of it, all that sort of thing. And that should be good fun. No. Oh. Why is this so difficult? So yeah, we'll just play to the end of this game session and then we'll call it a day for this video. And hopefully that's given you a few insights into my thought process. Such as it is. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Get out of the way. There we go. You, 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 get away, get away. Come on, nearly there, so nearly there. So nearly there. Oh, what have I missed? What have I missed? These. So close. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Anyway, I think that's more than enough rambling for now. 
Thank you for listening. If you sat and listened to the whole thing, <coughs> it's um, it's very much appreciated. And as I say, I hope that's given you a bit of insight into how I'm feeling, what I've been thinking about, and uh, why I've been away for a little while. So it just remains for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time, whenever that is. <laughs>